Καλησπέρα σα. Είμαι η Σύση Λιοπούλου και με μεγάλη χαρά σα καλωσορίζω εκ μέρου τη Lambda Development στο The Elinicon Experience Center και στο τέταρτο The Elinicon Moment Stock. Η σημερινή εκδήλωση διοργανώνεται στο πλαίσιο των δράσεων που υλοποιούνται για τον εορτασμό 2024, έτο πολιτισμού και τουρισμού Ιαπωνία Ελλάδα και θα πραγματοποιηθεί στα αγγλικά. Για το λόγο αυτό θα μου επιτρέψετε να συνεχίσω αυτό το σύντομο χαιρετισμό στην αγγλική γλώσσα. Your Excellency, Ambassador of Japan, General Secretary of Ministry of Tourism, Representatives of local communities, dear guests, I'm delighted to welcome you all to the fourth talk of the Linicon Moments Initiative, an event organized by Lambda Development in collaboration with the Embassy of Japan in Greece as part of the events held for 2024, Year of Culture and Tourism between Japan and Greece, under the auspices of the Greek Ministry of Culture. Today, we have the honor of welcoming our keynote speaker, Kuma Kengo, founder of the architectural firm Kengo Kuma and Associates, and Professor Emeritus at the University of Tokyo. Earlier today, here at the Elinicon Experience Center, hosted a stimulating roundtable discussion with architecture students from Japan and Greece. The participants presented the results of the educational workshops entitled Material Cultures, Creating with Wood and Stone, organized by the Embassy of Japan with the support of Alberta Ship Management and Kuma Lab as part of this anniversary year. On behalf of Lambda Development, I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to the Embassy of Japan in Greece, Mr. Aris Kafadaris, Chief Project Manager, Kengo Kuma and Associates Tokyo, Mr. Toshiki Hirano, Project Assistant Professor, Kuma Lab University of Tokyo, Dr. Vasilis Ganyatsas, Professor at the School of Architecture of the National Technical University of Athens, and of course, Mr. Kuma Kengo. As many, of you, as many of you may know, Kuma Kengo and his professional architectural office, Kengo Kuma and Associates, have been responsible for designing Riviera Galleria, the iconic high-end shopping destination located at the Elinicon Agios Cosmas Marina. In a few minutes, we will have the privilege of enjoying his insightful talk, during which he will explore the theme of architecture's return to nature and discuss his visionary approach to reconnecting architecture with the natural environment. Before we proceed, I would like to invite His Excellency, the Ambassador of Japan to Greece, Mr. Koichi Ito, to the stage for some brief remarks. Your Excellency. Well, good evening. Look at the sky. Wow. Maybe this is the, one of the best evening that I have since I came to Greece. Wow. We had a very hot summer, but now uh, season changed, and uh, I really love this country again, too. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Kiri SK Kiri Kalispera Sas. This is only my Greek language that I can speak, but uh, I'll be speaking more next year. Um, so distinguished guests, thank you very much for joining us this evening at an open lecture by Mr. Kengo Kuma, a world-renowned architect from Japan, hosted by the Japanese Embassy in Greece in cooperation with Lambda Development. At the outset, at the outset I'd like to extend my sincere appreciation to Lambda Development for their support. This year, year 2024, marks 125th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic relations between our two countries. And the leaders of our two countries, Prime Minister Mitsotakis and Prime Minister Kishida, declared the last year in Tokyo that we call this year Japan Greece year of culture and tourism. And I would say architecture is an area of human creativity where Greek and Japanese designers and philosophers have been long making important contribution to the world. For this reason, this event, a lecture by Mr. Kengo Kuma, 
is among top priorities now taking place for commemorating this special year in Greece. Now let me introduce Kengo Kuma briefly, as I think many of you are already familiar with his works and achievements. He was born in year 1954, and after years of contribution and achievements in architecture, he established Kengo Kuma and Associates in 1990. He is not only a founder of an internationally renowned architecture firm, but he is also a dedicated educator and researcher. After working for several decades as a professor at the University of Tokyo and Keio University, both are two top schools in Japan, he is currently Professor Emeritus at the University of Tokyo and continues teaching there. Until today, Mr. Kengo Kuma designed as many as several hundreds of architectural projects around the world. And most of them are now seen as icons in the communities or regions where they are constructed. Japan National Stadium in Tokyo, the Exchange in Sydney, Australia, Dallas Rolex Tower in the United States of America, the Sanson Art Center and the Cité de la Musique in France, Veterinary School of the University of Milan in Italy, if name a few. And we are pleased to know that Elinikon in Athens, which is one of the largest urban renovation projects in Europe, there will be two major retail spaces near the water designed by Mr. Kumar. And I, I would say, I don't know how many more years the Japanese government wants to be here as ambassador, but my secret and personal hope is that I wish to stay here until I see by myself the completion of Mr. Kumar's work in Athens. For all those achievements and the contributions, he has received numerous awards both from Japan and overseas, such as Imperial Prize, the Japan Art Academy Prize, John D. Rockefeller III Award. He was also chosen as one of the most influential people of year 2021 by Time Magazine. Distinguished guest, I came to Greece as Japanese ambassador in March this year. Since then, as a diplomat who has no background on architecture, I have been always amazed by stark difference in design of buildings between our two countries. But then last week, I read a book written by Mr. Kengo Kuma, Nihon no Kenchiku, Architecture of Japan, and learned that, especially after Japan began its modernization programs in the late 19th century, not only Japan received European architectural engineering but sometimes Japanese traditional architecture gave a big impact to European architects. We often say Japan and Greece are far apart each other. But I believe because we are so far apart each other, we both still have many ideas to learn from each other. And by doing so, we can innovate something new. It is my hope that through cultural exchanges, like the one we have this evening, people in Japan and Greece know more about their respective art and culture. And by doing so, making our culture even richer and more colorful. Without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to begin. Please welcome Kengo Kuma with a big round of applause. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sir Ambassador Ito Koichi san. So, uh, today, uh, so, uh, in, the, in the beautiful evenings, I want to talk about the importance of cultural exchange. 
as uh, Japan is the Greece, uh, the architecture tradition looks very different. So Japan's we are using wood for many, many years. And Greece is a, is, is a country so, uh, so which uh, so generate the classism um, as made by stones. And as it looks totally different, but still, I, f I feel the similarity between two architectural tradition. The intimacy is the one is a key word the, which we have in commons, and respect to nature is also another important aspect of two different tradition. And uh, sometimes the cultural exchange between the two different the cultures the, uh, create something new the, and is a, is a Japan is a, is a Greece is a good example of that kind of cultural exchange and as uh, this as a, as a event is part of this kind of cultural exchange and uh, before this event the Greece Greek student and Japanese student travel to many interesting places in Japan, Greeks, and as uh, visiting many interesting temples, shrines, in the, sometimes in the countryside of Japan, and uh, they visited the factory of the, as a craftsman, carpenters, and as um, they maybe, I hope they learned many things from that kind of places. Uh, also in Greece, as uh, they visited the countryside, the the mason craftsmen, uh, and as uh, working with the local communities, uh, maybe it's also, also is is a uh, is a big learning for them. And uh, today, as, uh, I also want to show the as a kind of example of cultural exchange, and basically. My architecture design is, uh, and uh, the cultural exchange are very much related. And uh, I, today I have actually too many slides, <laughs> 300. And, uh, and I, I want to start as, uh, to show the, those slides. And, and and the first slide is, is an example of cultural exchange. This is, is a ukiyo-e, one of the famous ukiyo-e by Hiroshige. And the, it is very unique and very different from Western painting. But, but one as a European as artist, has learned many things from this painting, Ukiyo-e. His name is Vincent Van Gogh. It, this is a copy of Ukiyo-e by him. So it looks so very strange compared with his, his own painting, but as a, by copying the Ukiyo-e, he wanted to study the essence of Japanese culture and and after the, the copying the, the, those ukiyo-e, he started the movement called Impressionism. And as, uh, what he learned from Japan is, uh, is maybe respect to nature and love for nature and as, uh, honesty to the as, uh, natural phenomena. And as a and uh, another example of learning from Japan is this is a house designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Maybe you know Frank Lloyd Wright, the American famous uh, the architect. The, he came to Japan many times and he learned from Japanese the buildings. The, uh, the open planning, the transparent facade, and the roof is a, a big roof is covering the whole spaces. That he learned that kind of 
the method as the film Japan. And the, the, this is my Hiroshige Museum. And Hiroshige, Vincent Gogh learned from Hiroshige, and also Frank Lloyd Wright learned from Hiroshige. And as uh, Frank Lloyd Wright wrote about Hiroshige, the, 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 without Hiroshige, I maybe I didn't uh, create my style. So he honestly wrote that. that. And, uh, and actually, the, 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 if, I, if we compare the works of Frank Lloyd Wright before Hiroshige and after Hiroshige, it's totally different. And uh, the, uh, the, he is, uh, has learned some kind of essence of Japanese tradition, and uh, he translated that tradition to his style. And my Hiroshige Museum, uh, this is my Hiroshige Museum, so I want to also the, the pick up the essence of Hiroshige by using wood. The roof is made by wood, and the facade is made by wood. But the most important thing for this museum is this hole, which connect the mountain behind and the village. I will show you the plan. And the Hiroshige Museum has a big hole in the center. And behind the Hiroshige Museum, there is a mountain. And the life of the village is, was basically relied on the natural as, as uh, resources of the mountain. So before 20th century, material all came from the mountain. And also, the energy came from the mountain. The elect they, we didn't have electric company, so, uh, so, but so we were cooking, and we were so, so, so heat up the water. So, and uh, those energy all came from the mountain behind. And then they built the shrine at the edge of the mountain. This is a shrine at the edge of the mountain. And a shrine was very, very important for them because shrine was showing their respect to the natural resources of the mountain. And they, as always, believe so without the natural resources of the mountain, so we cannot survive anymore. This is a very, very strong the philosophy of them. Maybe the same thing happened in Greece. The Parthenon was on top of the, the, the hill, and the Parthenon shows the importance of the, the nature and uh, the people. Is a, showing the respect to the natures with the Parthenons. And uh, maybe the same attitude as to natures existed in two different places. And, but in 20th century, people totally forget the importance of nature because the energy came from big company, electric company, gas company, oil companies, and uh, they began to think nature is not necessary for us. And then the, this shrine was abandoned. And now the, this shrine becomes a kind of abandoned ruin. It's very, very pity for the community. And what the, I did for Hiroshige Museum is to cut the building and and cut the building like to create the hole, the directing the shrine. Connecting village and shrine again is the goal of this design. 
and uh, <coughs> and also as a as a, this as a, This, this pointer is not working. This pointer is not so working so well. Maybe the battery, the energy is the biggest problem. The energy of the contemporary energy is always like this. And, uh, and the, the cut is a building like this to the connect. And also the entrance is coming from the mountainside. And in the 20th century, the entrance is always coming from parking, but it's a, I, the flip, the entrance. And this material is a, is a very important theme of today's lectures. The, the wood is important in Japan, the stones is important in Greece, but the both natural material. As a, in this museum, I did use the wood from the forest behind. And so for interior, the, most of the material came from the village. I also did use stone the for the floors, but the quarry is, is in the village. And the, the paper wall, so I did use the local rice papers and buy the local material, buy the local craftsmanship. And of course, wood came from the mountain behind. And as a totally, the materials of the museum was very, very local and made by the local craftsmen. And, and the aesthetics of the museum is based on the transparency. Super so juxtaposition of the layers is, is uh, the method. And the wood and rice papers is, um, is perfect material for that kind of transparency and super juxtaposition. But as a, at the same time, as a, I love stone. It's a kind of secret, sto secret story of us. So many people thought that the, we are the, 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 uh, the wooden users. But, as, uh, but some projects, as I want to use a local stone as a, for the main material. And this is a, a very small museum project. And the client is not public. Client is a, is a stone company in the village. And he bought the old the stone as the warehouses. And he asked me to uh, add some buildings. And his idea is the stone museum should be made by stone. Ah, thank you. Yes, <laughs> and as a, he bought those warehouses. But as a, as a, in the first meeting, as a, I asked his, him as a budget. He said, I have no budget. I can't understand <laughs> what you mean but with no budget. As a, I have no money, he said. But I have a small quarry. And I have those as a stone workers, mason, mason workers. And then I don't want to use money, but I have quality and customer. It's a perfect answer. <laughs> and uh, but as a, I was so as a, as shocked because it's totally different from normal project. But the next day, I as a. I got new idea. The craftsman the, can do something new with the stone. And I pro propose the craftsman to use a stone like this, the, making the louvers by stone. 
that this, this is a detail of the stone. And uh, it's totally different from the normal way of using stones. As, a, as a, after 20th century, the stone became the material for cladding. The concrete structures is cladded by stone is a typical use of stone. But I, I don't like that kind of the fake use of stone. It's a, it's a kind of cosmetics on the concrete. But instead of the use, using the stone as the, the cladding, so I propose them the, to use the solid stone to create transparency by stone. And this is the, the de detail of the, the, this museum. And this is beautiful interior. And this is another small uh, the pavilion in the museum. It is masonry, but it is also, again, the transparent. So we we uh, the have the, those small the holes as a and the, through the small holes, we can have the natural light into the building. But again, the client didn't want to use money. <laughs> and then he didn't use glass. He didn't buy glass from the, the company. He used it, he, used his, he proposed as me to use the sliced stone to get natural light in the building. But the effect is totally is beautiful. I love the effect of sliced stone and the translucent stone. And, as, uh, and finally, uh, he paid a little money to, uh, to them, but uh, he achieved that kind of quality by his own as a, as a quality and his own as a craftsmanship. And as another use of stone by us is inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright. And this is a very famous imperial hotel designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, the completed 1923. And as a, when he designed the imperial hotel, the, he asked the Japanese construction company to show him the every stone in Japan. And, uh, and he picked up th this stone. The, the name of the stone is Oya Stone. And uh, the construction company was very surprised because the stone he selected, Oya Stone, was very fragile stone. And as, um, it's not as a fitting to the, as a, as the imperial hotel, they thought. Because even, even in Japan, we have marbles, granite, those, uh, uh, the durable, the beautiful stone. But Frank Wright said, for Japanese as a, as a culture and for, for Japanese tradition, as a, to use marble is not fitting. To use this kind of soft volcanic stone is appropriate in Japan, he said. And he designed this kind of the detail by Oyarishi stone. And as a, it is a very smart this, as a decision by Frank Lloyd Wright. And so it is totally fitting to the forest. And, and after the Imperial Hotel, the Oya stone became very popular as a, everywhere in Japan. And as, if you go to Japan, maybe in Tokyo, so you can find the Oya stone's hedge, Oya stone wall so in the city. And, uh, so because Frank Lloyd Wright totally understand 
So what is Japanese and what is the essence of Japanese culture? And as a, this is a, as a small as a, uh, community centers I as a, did as a design with OAC stones. It's a kind of an innovation project. And uh, they just very close to the quality of OAC stone. And what I did with stone is create transparency with stone again. And we worked with a, as a very good structure engineers, and his solution was as a kind of composite structures with stone and steel plate. And this is the process of making this wall. And the red plate is showing the, as a uh, steel uh, structure. And uh, he himself checking by his foot. And this is the interior. This is, a, uh, again, we didn't use the stone as cladding. We use the solid stones, but it is transparent. And the next material is bamboo. I always try to find the local interesting material in every place in China. So I decided to use bamboo. And location is besides Great Wall, maybe you know Great Wall, there's a mountain behind. The, this small hotel, the, we propose to use the bamboo. But as a, I was not so sure the client said yes. But as a, a client liked my idea. I, he said, ah, bamboo is very, very cheap in China. <laughs> and then he agreed to use bamboo. And as a, but in China, to you, the bamboo is, 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 is everywhere, but they, they don't use bamboo for the building. They only use the bamboo for the, uh, the construction site, the, uh, the temporary material, but I wanted to use bamboo for the permanent building for the material. And, as, uh, the, and also, the, we didn't cut the, the, the soil that following the topography as possible as can. And then so we kept the vegetation of the place. And uh, this is the entrance of our bamboo house. And uh, most of the material of the house uh, was, was bamboo, local bamboo. Uh, this is the main lounge of the hotel, and as uh, I call this space the tea house. It's a space for drinking tea, and uh, as, a, as a, this is a, as a kind of protagonist of the whole project, and it is a symbol of there as a, as a, as a, as a enjoying. Uh, the, the beauty of nature in the bamboo, and sometimes they drink tea. And in Beijing Olympic, so as a producer of the Beijing Olympic 2008, the Chaimo, as a film director, Chaimo, he loved this space, and he is a, is a, uh, used this space for his movie of the Olympic. And as, uh, at that time, uh, the relationship between Japan and China was uh, very, very bad. But as, uh, as, uh, for the Olympic, as, uh, as, uh, as opening of the Olympic, the Chaimo did use the, this, the, the image of this bamboo house, and I was very, very happy. And as, uh, in Europe, as, uh, we often use wood. As, uh, it's a project in Italy. 
So we did use this as a wooden element, but without nail, without any steel as a joint, we so fix, so we assemble the those wooden bars. And finish. And as a, as a, actually, so we as a, as made this pavilion with student. The Japanese carpenters prepare the material and prepare the, the those as a joint by us, but the student is assembled by themselves. This is the same as the, the workshop we did with. Uh, as Professor Basilis, so we achieved this kind of collaboration with students. Students learned many things from this system. And after coming back, as a, as a, as working with the Professor of Tokyo University, so we as a, constructed the bigger version of this as a, pavilion. It's a 10 meters so museum but made by the same system. The wooden sticks without any metal joint. And it's just very transparent, and the wood can make it happen. And this is a ceiling. And as for the bigger as a bridge, as we also as I try to use wood. And as in Japan, and even in Europe, as before 20th century, there existed many, many wooden bridges. But it all disappeared. So I want to bring back that kind of tradition with the, some contemporary engineering. This is the <clears throat> interior of the bridge. So as a, some a wooden bridge often covered by the roof to protect the wood. And this space is used for museum. And as a, for the same village, as a, we as a, were inspired by the, this small uh, tea house. The thatch roof used to be very, very common, but also disappeared in the 20th century. It's a small hotel, and the facade is made by the thatch block. And we are thinking about the recycle of the thatch. The recycle of the such is also, was also is very common in, in before 20th century, and uh, the, uh, the recycle was part of the lifestyle of Japan. This is the interior of the, the, the such block, and as for the same village, the third project for the small village is a, it is a library by wooden st structure. And again, it's a composite structure with steel and wood. And as, uh, as we propose as, a, as, a, as a wooden floors for avoid the, uh, the shoes, and the kids as uh, are working in the library like that. And uh, it is a library, but at the same time, it is it's, uh, their living room. The kids and mothers are playing together in the library because of the room floors. And this kind of situations was happened by the wooden floor. And the National Stadium, Olympic Stadium, as for the 2020 Olympic, 
as a, we designed with wood. As a, as a one reason is the location. It is in the center of Tokyo, but at the same time, the forest is as a, as a forest, as a, as a, is the forest of the big shrine. As a, and the big shrine and the stadium are connected. And uh, I want to show the harmony between forest and stadium. And, it, and as the main structure of the stadium is steel. But, but, but the impression of the stadium is wood. And, as we, and, as a, and also the structure of the roof is a composite structure, hybrid structures of wood and steel. And as a, we try to integrate vegetation and as a, uh, and the build as a architecture, and that to create uh, to showing the harmony. And as a hint of this as a, as Olympic Stadium, came from this old temple, as a Horyuji Temple. It is the oldest existing wooden building in the world. It was built seventh century. And uh, and the student, as a participant in the workshop, Greek, Greek student, visited this Holy Ridge Temple. And uh, the, the magic of the Holy Ridge Temple, magic of the long history of Holy Ridge Temple, is the section of the building, the layers of the roof, the protects of wood of soffit. And also natural ventilation is possible because of the layer at the roof. And the and intimate scale of those element, the those as uh, uh, the rafters, is very similar to the detail of the uh, Parthenon. The Parthenon also has a, has a joist to support the roof. And the historians pointed out the point, originally the Greek temple was made by wood, and the details of the, the buildings was, was uh, translated into the as a stone building. Yeah. This is the history, and the same as a intimate detail existed in Holy Temple. The layers of the, the roof. As a, as a make the wood as permanent material, and also make ventilation possible, natural ventilation possible. And for the top floors, as we propose uh, this as an open as a promenade, so it's open to the community, and as. A, it is very rare in the sports as a facilities. As the sports facilities is basically only for the, uh, the uh, in the sports only in the sports event. The, the, the day without sports event is totally enclosed. But as uh, we thought, the sports facilities, as the sports as a building, also should open to community every day. And, uh, and finally, as we could create this kind of public space in the sports building. And this is uh, uh, in, uh, the, uh, the interiors of the, uh, the uh, stadium. So again, the, uh, we, uh, we did use the wood for the structural element of the roof. And there's a, and another a secret a story of this is a, a building is color of the ch chairs. It is looks like 
full of the, the people, but the, in the, uh, the Olympic the, the event is a, is a, in the COVID, and then no the people can uh, the, get in the stadium. Only athlete play is, a, is a, in the vacant stadium. But we propose to have the multi colors, multiple colors, polychrome, the chairs, and then it looks like full of people. And uh, athlete, uh, some athlete uh, uh, came to me and they, uh, they uh, 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 appreciate our chair design. And it looks like full of the audience, and uh, as they can learn as in the, f as the f energy of the people. But actually, no people. But as a, it's a much secret magic of this design. And as in European context, as a, we also as a, often use wood. And this is a project in France. It's a, it's a riverside project. So we preserve, we try to preserve the is existing brick building, but we add the wooden the structures on the brick building. And another the idea is to bring nature as possible as can. As a, uh, as a small rivers, as a, it's called the biotop rivers, and the covered, semi-covered space uh, like Japanese gardens. The Japanese garden also always have this kind of engawa space. Engawa means uh, in between, as uh, in between between uh, the building and the gardens, and uh, that kind of as a, a semi-covered space as, as creates the kind of dialogue between nature and building. As a, as a whole, the idea is similar to Hiroshige Museum. As a, it is a, uh, it to connect city and nature as a, with this kind of whole. And there's a, there's a newest project in France. It's a Sandoni Players Station. It's, it's, a, uh, it's just was opened before Paris Olympic. And a, our idea is to create the garden station. It's not concrete station. The rooftop is totally covered by green and open to public. And the building itself is as a, made by mostly wood. And the interior is also made by wood. It is very rare for the train station. And as I explained the building to President Macron, and as a, it's, a, it's, just, it's just a June 24, uh, so he was facing the very difficult situation, so politically very, very difficult, but he, he came to the opening and uh, I'm very happy to see him. And I explained the, the building the, to him and, and as his comment is, ah, it looks like the living room. And it's, it's a very good comment. And uh, the TV as a, as a, as a commentator said, uh, he already decided to de retire as a president to become the interior commentator. <laughs> it is a, I was surprised to hear as a comment. And this is a, in the Olympic, it is a, a torch, uh, uh, was people are carrying the torch to the stations. 
And in America, so we sometimes is, uh, use wood, but as a, as in this project, I want to explain about the use of stone. As here, uh, in the centers, you see the, the stone wall. As I brought the Japanese mason uh, to America, because Japanese castles has a has a special uh, wall made by the special technique. That technique started in the 16th century, and some historian pointed out maybe some European influence came to Japan to start that as a, as a techno, as a technique. But it's not so sure. But it's still, it is a very, very Japanese technique. The stones is, looks very natural, is a, but is a, it's very strong. But the problems happened in America. So we propose to use a Japanese stone as a, a castle wall for the retaining wall. But the Americans, as the uh, officers as a, of the town, said, as a stone, as a retaining wall, is not allowed in America. You should use concrete. And as a, uh, and uh, as a, as a, as a we uh, uh, so supplies because Japanese as a stone technique is perfectly protecting the castle wall castles from earthquake. Is we have a long, long history of that kind of technique, and uh, and finally, as a, uh, we as a show them some evidence and some as a, and ex, as he, historical evidence, and uh, we could get the permission by them. And we as a, could use the stone, very beautiful castle wall in America. And after the achievement of this, as a, uh, the Rolex, uh, Rolex building in America also did use as a, as a stone castle wall in Dallas. And the, and the ambassador, ambassador as a point, uh, as a, uh, uh, mentioned about that project. It is another example of cultural exchange. And in Scotland, UK, as a, I as a, as a wanted to use a new materials so because of the location. As a, as a site is very close to the, that sea cliff, and, as a, and also we want to bring the building into the river. It, it is a site plan. So we try to create the dialogue between nature and the river and land. And we, so we couldn't use wood for the facade, but instead so we tried to as a, create that kind of natural phenomena by the artificial material. But this is a, it's a it's not easy challenge. The structurally, so we, so water pressure is very, very strong, and uh, so we should have that kind of strong as a wall, uh, but some natural roughness. As a cave again, as a hole again, which connect nature and land. And in the, for the interiors, we could use local wood. And the, the warmness is theme of the interior. And we propose the living room in the city. 
and as a prince, as a Prince William, and as the Catherine came to the opening, and as a, they also as a, uh, uh, love the materiality of the building. They studied art in the, the, the university cl close to, the, to this building. And in Denmark, uh, so we ch uh, did a challenge for the, uh, the working with carpenters in Denmark. And there is a Christian Andersen Museum. And another challenge of this is museum should be lower than the neighbors. And usually, museum is higher than the neighbors, but as we try to as a, as a flip the relationship. The building should be much and disappears in the environment. And this is the final as a, as a relationship with the town. And as a, as a carpenters in Denmark, that's also excellent. But the regulation is totally different from Japan. So in Den the Danish the regulation is ask, is requires to use metal for every joint. It's op totally opposite from Japan. The Japan, as a, sometimes we use metal, but basically, so in the small buildings especially, we don't use nail, metal, so wood and wood are, are totally connected without metal. This is a Japanese method. But as a Danish regulation requires to use metal for every joint. It is not, not it is a little bit strange for Japanese as a, because as a, as a joint without metal is a kind of flexible joint absorb the, 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 the energy. And absorbs energy is is perfect solution for earthquake. And uh, uh, the, historically, the, we are following that kind of system. But the, the, some European regulation is totally opposite. But anyway, so we should respect we should the, the respects the, the local regulation because we want to uh, build the building. And uh, finally, uh, so we could achieve uh, this kind of so beautiful wooden structure with the Danish carpenters. And there's a Next is a, a very unique stone building in Europe. It is in Switzerland, in the mountainside. So the, the project is, the place is Varus. And that Vars stone is, is very, very famous in Swiss. And uh, the, the, we combine wood and stone for the facade. But it's, uh, the joint is like that. So it's suspended from top so because so we slice the stone like this thickness, and then the lightness, light stone element and the stone element and the light stone element and the wood are combined together. And as a, as a, this is a balls, the town of Balas. So historically, so they have the, they are using the stone for the roof, like this, and we try to match this kind of beautiful stone roof, but with the new technology. This is the interior of this building, and as a landscape of Val's village is like that, and our building is a. Has a new technique 
but still merging to the embodiment. This is very important for us. And if, this is a project in Arvenia. It's not so far from here. National Park Visitor Centers. And uh, this is a, is a computer graphics. It's, an, it's under construction. And uh, so again, we try to combine wooden structure and stone roof. And Albania also has a, the tradition of the stone roof, it's a slate roof. And also they have this, uh, just, uh, t traditionally using wood for the, as a, as a small houses. We try to combine those as a, a tradition together to create as a, this, as a, uh, as a quiet building merging to the environment. You see the combination of the stone and, uh, and wood. As, a, as a, I, I uh, studied the history of the, uh, of the, of the Balkan architectures, and as a wooden materials is also very, very popular in Balkans, uh, Balkan island. But as a, some of the, uh, the, uh, the stones and traditions as came from north, and, uh, the, and then uh, the now the, to find the wooden building is not easy in Balkan. But as, uh, I want to bring as, uh, that kind of tradition again to the public building. And as, uh, the next material is softer material. As, uh, wood and stone is uh, the two opposite material. But as uh, I try to find the another option, the soft material, and uh, this is a fabric. And there's a fabric in, in the, 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 wind, the snow country is not easy. But so we found the solution for the building made by the fabric facade and fabric interior. And, and the, in the Greek project, uh, in this big Elenikon project, we are designing the building with fabric. And the Riviera Galleria is the place of our design, as a, as a, uh, of our design. And as uh, I want to show, <coughs> as a, another as a, as a solution for the beach side building. In case of the uh, uh, Scottish project. So we did use a precast concrete and stones, but in, in Greek Riviera, so I tried to create the softness by the fabric and the way being effect by the fabric. As uh, again, the wood as, uh, and fabric are combined together to make the soft impression to the people. And uh, this is a uh, the, the waving effect of the of the fabric as a uh, canopy, and uh, it's totally as uh, uh, softer than the normal concrete building. And as, uh, as besides those bigger projects, we often do the smaller project with a new challenge. It is a tra wooden trailer house as a, as a, with an openable window. And the main flame is that we have a steel flame, so we need to use steel flame. But there's a facade and interiors are all made by wood. 
and the impression is totally different. As uh, it is in the center of Tokyo, as we did a challenge to use this trailer for the temporary restaurant. As a size-wise, this is not big building, not big architecture, but it is very intimate, and the wood and the intimacy are working together. And as a, this is a, only for six months, but as a, after the use of this as a trailer in Tokyo, so we moved the, this restaurant to Hokkaido and the, the Tohoku and the, the south of Japan. It's a traveling restaurant in Japan. It's a, another as lifestyle with new material. And uh, this is another challenging project by the poly, uh, polyethylene tank. This is a, it is, was exhibited in the home delivery exhibition in MoMA, New York. And as uh, we designed this poly tank, and as uh, uh, this poly tank was used for the material for the floor, the wall, and ceiling. And the basic ideas of this house is the water is flowing in the, uh, the house. And the student, again, as uh, they make the, this house by themselves, and they enjoy uh, the participating in this project, and the water is flowing in the element. And that means as uh, if you, as uh, they want to heat up the house, as the hot water is produced by the, so, the solar energy panels, and it is possible. And as uh, temperatures as uh, can be changed easily by this system. This is the interiors of the house, and one single unit uh, is used for every the element of the house, the bed, the kitchen, and the table, and everything, the materials are made by the same unit. And the generators was used here. And another challenge is umbrella house. It is an umbrella, but assembles umbrella makes a new house. And uh, this is a unique new, f new fashion umbrella. And, uh, and again, student, there's a 15 student gathers in the gardens, and uh, they made uh, this umbrella house by themselves. And after making the house, they That those are the details, and they decided to stay the house. They drink the house, eat the house, and they stay the house. And this is again showing the new lifestyle by the new material. In, and uh, the, uh, the, in 20th century, the options of the material are very much limited. But with new technology, so we can have the Many, many uh, the diverse options. And uh, the, e even in the uh, disaster, uh, earthquake, as uh, a disasters, and uh, this kind of uh, the temporary uh, the, uh, the structures uh, the can be used for refugee house in the disasters or in the, in the big earthquake. And as uh, Last project I show you today is the smallest project today. It is a Tsumiki, the wood block project. As a, Tsumiki is a, is a Japanese wood block, and Ryuichi Sakamoto musician, Ryuichi Sakamoto, maybe you know Ryuichi Sakamoto, he is my old friend. 
uh, unfortunately, so he passed away last year. And uh, so he came to me asking, uh, I want to make the new type of wood block, totally different from Western wood block. And his ideas is, is Western wood block is based on the stone and brick culture. It is heavy material and stacking each other. So, but in Japan, so we should so design the light, transparent wood block. I really love that idea. The transparency is, a, is, a, is an openness as it can be the new concept for futures. And, as a, and we designed together to have this kind of system. It's a woven structure, not stacking structure. And the woven structure has the freedom to make those kind of shapes, forms. And as a, as a, again, and as a, we have <clears throat> as a, as a, as a special technique to make it happen. As a, you see this joint, uh, this uh, as a part is the weakest part of this triangular shape. We insert it as a special as a, as a element on this. And with this joint, so we can so make the strong structures with this kind of thin plate, thin wooden plank. And I always thinking about the traditional material needs some new technique, some new engineering, because so we are facing the many crises. The, uh, the climate crisis, the global warming, uh, that kind of new situation should be solved with some new technique, with uh, the old traditional material. And for achieving that kind of uh, uh, the challenge, as, uh, I think the cultural exchange is very, very important. So we are, as a, I'm coming from the country of wood, and you are coming from the country of stones. And as if the both cultures can work together to find the new solution with the traditional material. So our futures is basically should come with that kind of collaboration. Thank you very much.